The American National Standard for Tree Care Operations, ANSI A300, was issued in nine parts by the green industry, including representatives from the USDA Forest Service and the National Park Service. The International Society of Arboriculture has also published best management practices to accompany the ANSI A300 series. ANSI A300 Part 7 defines Integrated Vegetation Management, or IVM, as a system of managing plant communities in which managers set objectives, identify compatible and incompatible vegetation, consider action thresholds, and evaluate, select, and implement the most appropriate control method or methods to achieve their established objectives. The choice of control method or methods is based on their environmental impact and anticipated effectiveness giving site characteristics, security, economics, current land use, and other factors. The ideal objective for utility industry is to use IVM principles to establish plant communities comprised of species that will never interfere with electric facilities. A useful tool is biological control, known as covered type conversion which provides a competitive advantage to short-growing, early successional plants, allowing them to thrive and successively compete against unwanted tree species for sunlight, essential elements, and water. It often requires selective use of herbicides against incompatible species to enable desirable species to become established. The early successional plant community is relatively stable and tree resistant. As this community becomes increasingly established, the need for intervention decreases. In the long run, industry considers this type of biological control to be the most appropriate method, at least where it can be done effectively. The benefit of IVM and cover type conversion is that it works with nature rather than against it, decreasing costs and the utility's footprint over time. When properly managed, diverse tree-resistant plant communities develop. The communities not only protect an electric facility and reduce long-term maintenance, but also enhances wildlife habitat, forest ecology, and aesthetic values. A central point is that rather than looking at transmission corridors as sacrifice areas, industry, government, private environmental groups, and the public working together can use them as areas of opportunity to provide much needed habitat that may be otherwise threatened while at the same time protecting the nation's electric supply. I'm Rick Johnstone with IVM Partners and IVM Partners is a 501c3. I started it about 10 years ago. Um, I came from the utility industry at the same capacity as Mike as a system forester for utilities in the east and I did a lot of work with um, uh, US Fish and Wildlife Service and in discussions with the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation they wanted to see some work done around the Delaware Bay and the Chesapeake Bay so with that I've done work with a couple wildlife refuges helping them with invasive weed control using the same herbicides and techniques that we use in utility right-of-way management so Part of what I've done with IVM Partners and working with Mike is to, is to come out and show what happens if we do what conventionally was done, such as hand cutting or mowing, and compare that with if you do an integrated approach, where you don't just rely on cutting, you use herbicides to take care of the incompatible species for utility as tall growing trees, for an agency that might include the invasive weeds. And so you, you bring in the other tools and techniques and then see what happens to the ecosystem when you do it that way. We've got in different areas where we get the wildflowers, we're getting a lot more bees, butterflies, hummingbirds, using those right of because we're bringing in plants that they need for nectar. So that's one of the benefits we're seeing not only here but across the country. When we do an IVM approach, we bring back the early successional plant community which brings back the animals that need that and the insects. So there's a lot of benefits by working together on it. It's looking at managing this land and managing it in an area that's 
in a way that's compatible for both the electric company and for the, the public around it and for the wildlife that's going to utilize it. So it's trying to be more of a uh, holistic approach than just um, we need to manage for electric. We're looking at it, what are the other benefits of these right of ways? And across the country between electric and gas, there's 12 million acres that are in rights of way. And that's a lot of land that is potential habitat if we manage it correctly. Hello, uh, my name is Jeff Howe. I'm with an organization called uh, Dovetail Partners out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. And Dovetail Partners' primary role in the world is to provide information, science-based information um, on land use that helps humans and the environment interact. So we, we look at that complex interaction of the economic, social, and environmental issues and how they all come together and try to look at the systems that promote good environmental practices. Um, our, probably our biggest skill set is in looking at the use of certification, which is a growing global trend that says environmental certification is a way to set transparent guidelines for uh, management of lands, whether it's organic certification for farms or forest certification for forests or right-of-way certification for right-of-ways. And, um, and that, that's our expertise is in those systems. And we've been working with those for 20-something years. About a year and a half ago, uh, a large group came to us uh, which included uh, the Wildlife Habitat, the, uh, the Ut Utility Arborist Association, uh, the EPA, and a, and, a, and a host of others. Rick was, part of, the, was part, of the, part of this group that had come together about three or four years ago to, to look at um, how we manage our right-of-ways around the country and say, is there, is there a way to promote uh, uh, environmental stewardship of these right-of-ways and is there a way to guide that and also recognize it when people do it are doing it to, the, to best management practices. And, it's a co and all of these systems are complex systems. Farm systems are complex systems. Forest systems are complex systems. Right-of-ways are complex systems. I mean, there's, if you look at it, there's, there's probably, we know that there's at least 20 million miles of right-of-ways in the United States alone. So the way we manage our right-of-ways has a huge impact on interconnecting all these other systems. So we said that was really critically important. So they came to us and said, can we help you, can, can, can we help them um, look at uh, some form of accreditation for for uh, for utilities and, and utility right-of-way managers saying they are following best management practices. They're, they're doing what they can to promote diverse ecosystems while still managing within all the strict regulations and guidelines that are there and recognize this is a complex problem and it's not one that everybody's going to agree on and we, we thrive in that. We are a 501 to C3. As a result of that, we formed a, a, a another small organization called the Right-of-Way Stewardship Council. Last year, we, we, we concluded our draft of uh, environmental standards, our right-of-way stewardship standards, and we did three pilots. Uh, APS was the first pilot that we actually came out here and, and had, they were audited according to these standards, which you can go online and see those standards, or I can email them to you. And they passed with flying colors. Uh, um, um, and, and, and they were, they were our, you know, our, our victim of our first test process. Then over the, and we did three organizations. We did, the right, we did APS, we did one in New York, and we did one in Vermont to get some different uh, uh, ecosystem uh, evaluations and to look at the process. Then this spring, we evaluated the, the process and the board of directors approved us to launch the system and we are actually just launching this nationally um, this month. Basically, they look, they look at just about everything. I mean, I think we try to look at the utility right away as an ecosystem in and unto itself. It had, because it's, you know, it's regulated, and so they try to look at how, how do you make this a, 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 as complex an, a, a system as you can make it, given all the rules and regulations and restrictions that, that are incumbent upon that system and the use that it's used for. So um, they, try to, they try to look at everything, you know, the wildlife, the plants, the species, the, all those kinds of things, and saying, are, 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 are they doing the best they can that we know of? And, and we try to set a, put it in place a set of standards that's, that's a fairly high bar that, that says they're following these good practices. But, and that, then it says that they're considering and they're being flexible in those practices to address specific issues on site. So it's not prescriptive. It's kind of in a way that says, you know, you want, you want to be sure that you're, they're, they're considering everything that's unique to in every individual site as well. So. And I guess it gets into, again, what is your 
primary land management objective. When, when we look at the utilities, we'll say, what is our primary objective? And that's safety, reliability, and access. When we get on somebody else's land, we always then tie in, what are the secondary objectives? So when we get on federal lands or state, they'll say, we want invasive weed control. Somebody will say it's erosion control or stopping sedimentation or something like that. When we look at the integrated approach, we try to tie in what are the best practices to meet as many objectives as possible. And the reason we came up with the accreditation as well is in discussions with the agencies, especially with the US EPA, we have a, a fact sheet that the EPA said integrated vegetation management is the best practice. But they would go to a utility and they'd say, well, we're doing integrated vegetation management, but all they were doing was mowing. Or they were broadcast herbicide treating and they said, we're doing integrated vegetation management. So the, the agency came to us and said, how do we know it when we see it? How is any agency gonna know it when they see it? So the industry got together and said, okay, let's look at all the best practices. And it's not just utilities, we've got the uh, Dovetail, we've got the Wildlife Habitat Council, we have the Pollinator Partnership, we have other groups as part of this accreditation to then say, make sure we're looking at all the different aspects that come into play. And I think from our perspective, I think, I think Rick's last few sentences were really important is that we, it is a complex interplay of demands and requirements. And, and uh, our, I think part of what the Rudaway right Stewardship Council says, we're, 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 we're defining that line in the sand, as he said. Right. We, here's, here's what, here is a line. And whether it's perfect or not, we're not saying it's perfect. A lot of this arose out of forest management, which you guys know you're generally looking at 100, 150 years planning. And I think the same is true of these things, saying we're not looking at the next three to five years. We're looking at over the next 20 years, how do we evolve this practice so that it is, it is being more integrated in, in, its, in, its, uh, in its management activities. And it is looking at those concerns and that you have a forum for raising those concerns and directing those so we can, so we can address those. I think that's the, that's the key, and, it's, and that it's open.